My name is Hugh Dempsey. I'm now a resident of Calgary. I was born in a little town called Edgerton, Alberta, which is in east central Alberta. And our family was dried out during the Depression, and we moved into Edmonton in 1935. So that was where my home was, and this is where I was educated until um, I got a number of jobs when I left school working for the fire department. I left there the day before I was supposed to jump off a three-story building into a net. And uh, finally was taken on by the Alberta government and started their historic sign program. And I came to the attention of Eric Harvey, uh, and he invited me to join his newly formed Glenbow Foundation in Calgary. So in 1956, uh, I moved to Calgary and uh, started my work there. Uh, because of some other circumstances with the Alberta government, I had already been to meetings of the uh, Historical Society of Alberta, became quite interested. So when I came to Calgary, the first thing I did was formed a branch of the society in Calgary and ultimately went on to be president. So it was a very interesting time, and uh, the years with the Glenbow and with the Historical Society have been the source of great interest and great wealth to me to see the history of Alberta unfold in the documents and photographs and so on, and actually to experience it in many ways. Because I stepped into this scene just about the time when things were starting to happen, when books were starting to be published, when movies were being considered, when uh, Alberta history was becoming, well, should we say legitimate? And as a result of that, of course, I was there uh, ready and willing to uh, do what I could to carry on this story and develop this story about Alberta history. Back in the early 1950s, I was a publicity writer for the uh, Alberta government. And one day the, uh, my boss came and said, we're going to help out this group called the Historical Society of Alberta. Uh, their new president, a man by the name of Jim McGregor, wants to start a quarterly magazine. And so we want you to coordinate matters with them. We'll pay for the cost of printing. They'll put the material together. So that was fine. And uh, shortly after that, I met the editor, uh, the Reverend W. Everard Edmonds, who was at that point in his, I think it's either late 80s or early 90s. And he uh, was going to edit the magazine. So. The way it worked for a while is that the material, he brought the material together, I took it and uh, edited it and um, we brought out this mimeograph sheet called the Alberta Historical Review. Um, as time went along I became more involved. Shortly after this, um, Jim McGregor, when he took over the Historical Society, uh, was found it to be that executives were all in their 80s or older. And so what he did is he, uh, as he kind of explained it to me, he relegated them to the Senate. He appointed them all into honorary positions and then brought in some young people to be in charge or to run the, uh, the society. And one of these was Bruce Peel, who was the librarian of the University of uh, Alberta in Edmonton. And the other one, much to my surprise, was myself. So uh, without even being a member of the Historical Society of Alberta, I became a member of his executive. And uh, shortly after that, um, I became president. And uh, it was all kind of funny because uh, it was all just kind of flowing one after the other. Um, I found that it wasn't possible for me, me to, well, I should say that uh, about this time, uh, Mr. Edmund decided to retire. So uh, he was no turning back, he, that was it, he was just leaving. And so uh, I said, well, there's no way I can be editor of the Alberta Historical Review and being president at the same time. So I uh, resigned as president and kept on as editor. And so I only served about three quarters of one term, I guess it was, as president before I stepped down. Well, about that time, this would be about 1956, I accepted a position as archivist with the Glenbow Foundation in Calgary. So when I moved to Calgary, 
I took the editorship of the Alberta Historical Review with me. Uh, this was the old-fashioned method where they did things with hot lead and a uh, um, very laborious process. And this was all being done by a printers in uh, Edmonton. And I found this very awkward for me being in Calgary and trying to work with an ed uh, a, a printer in Edmonton. So I switched over and uh, went to uh, uh, commercial printers in Calgary, as it was at that time. And uh, two or three people that I knew were interested in this, uh, what was going on. And so uh, one of them, Jack Herbert in particular, who was executive director at the Glenbow, said, uh, well, you know, how come you're doing all this from about the society in Edmonton, but we don't have a society in Calgary? Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. So with Jack Herbert and two or three others, we sent out notice to all the people who were getting the Alberta Historical Review who lived in Calgary, plus others that we knew, and called a meeting. And in uh, 1957, uh, the uh, Historical Society of Alberta Calgary chapter uh, was formed, and Jack Herbert became uh, its uh, first president. Again, I was offered this position of being on the executive, but I said, you know, can't do two things. I'm editor of Alberta History, and uh, that's enough for any one person. So that's how it went. And we had uh, the Cost House, which was a um, kind of a social gathering organization in Calgary, uh, offered the free use of their facilities, and uh, that's where the, the uh, meetings were held. And uh, the people at Glenbow were really the heart and soul of the uh, Calgary branch for a year or so. And then other people came in, Sheila Johnston and other people like this, who uh, gave it a broader appeal and broader uh, base. But uh, it never looked back from there. That uh, Those few months in 1956-57 laid the groundwork for what became a very... Uh, um, active historical society, and over the years uh, it has maintained that position.